So for the divining technique, for your practical dough, what I'd like to do is you set your wheel, if you're going to make pockets or pinwheels, at a four by four square. So my first division, so that you don't have too much scrap, is going to be just a line straight down. Then you pick up the line one more time to get one more additional row in there. Again, this is not a cutting tool, just the pure division. I go opposite ends and divide my square and make one more down here. Now, so that I don't waste any dough, I make this incision right here, separate the dough, and with this half, I'm going to make croissants. For the Danish projects, I use a pastry wheel. You can use a knife, but if the dough gets slightly soft, you're gonna cause more problems to the layers. And you're just going to make clean cuts. Make sure that every incision that you make opens up a perfect layer towards a cross section so that it can lift up and really show off your hard work from laminating. So for the pinwheels, I make an incision about an inch and a half towards the center. Start here and carry it right into the next piece. Finish it over here, 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 here. And then you change the angle here to here. So for this shape, I take the opposite wing and fold it towards the center. For the simple fold, I just take these outside wings push them together in the middle, and compress them down. The goal here is, for all of these shapes, is that the balance of dough to filling is in a good, balanced format. I don't want to eat too much dough or too much filling. This gives me a nice straight line to put your filling into it. On this one, you have to be careful that as the edges start to brown, they're going to become very crunchy and are going to caramelize a whole lot quicker, so being careful not to dry them out. Another Danish shape I'd like to show you is, I call it butterfly. So what you do is you take your square and you create a triangle. You take a, a peri knife, or you can also use a, a bend scraper, and you will cut about approximately half an inch away from the outside edge. Just make sure you cut in from the close side in. You take it from the other side, and you're doing the same thing, like so. You will open up your square. You bring your cut part over it, but only to the next cut of the other side, without any egg wash.
you're flipping the square over it because I would like to rock it towards me and you're doing the same thing with the other side. Just like so. Another one I would like to show you is, I call this a hurricane or a tornado. What you do is you take your uh, pizza cutter or you can also use your bench scraper and we will do the same thing like we did before previously with our pinwheel. So we cut in from four sides in towards the center of your square. You take your uh, two corners over here are towards to the center, are towards you, press it down well, turn around your square and we're doing the same movements like we did before uh, towards the, the center, press it down. We take this corner in, into the center, and from the opposite way, we're taking this corner, also place it into the center. And if you look at it and see how it spins, it will look like a hurricane or a tornado. I will demonstrate a full pocket as opposed to the half pocket. When I do this one, I bring the points just together. I don't want to create an overlap. When I do it, I do the same thing here with a good impression in the center, but this opens up the corners. If you overlap, you lose this. This is somewhat diminished. And that, when it bakes, it shows off the lamination. Okay, this shape is called a palette. We line up the corners with the edge of the table. We take the circle cutter. We center the circle cutter right through the middle of the table. Make a good cut. Fold this back. Make your filling. It's ideal for a round-shaped filling, such as a piece of fruit or a fan piece of fruit, to accentuate the shape. 